Bladder problems are often associated with the elderly, but there are many young men and women who also experience bladder illness. For them, talking about their condition can be difficult, and many young people feel embarrassed and are afraid to seek help. We met some young adults who shared their experience, how they live life positively despite their bladder condition, and why they want to help others in the same situation. When I was 14, I had my first urinary tract infection and I didn't really know what was going on. I was just in a lot of pain. That was when I was given my first course of antibiotics and I'm 29 now and I think I've had a urinary tract infection at least every three months since then. I was travelling in Australia and I wanted to stay there for two years and then one day it just all of a sudden I just needed a wee more frequently and it just slowly from there got worse and worse. My name's Lara Steele, I'm 25 and I have overactive bladder, which means that I need to go to the toilet more frequently and with more urgency. The inside of your bladder should be almost an opaque white colour. Mine is bright red. My name's Matthew Goff, I'm 27, and I have a condition called interstitial cystitis, which is a bit of a mouthful. But effectively I was diagnosed with that at the age of 18. It's an incurable bladder condition. It's usually more common in women, and, and women that are over the age of 50. And obviously as you can imagine with your bladder, when uh, urine and, and other toxins are in there, they're obviously bad toxins, that's why they're going to go out of your system. So that combined with the sort of red raw skin, if you like, that's within the bladder, effectively leads to the main symptoms, which are pain and going to the toilet a lot more frequently. Underneath my clothes, I'm full of lines, tubes and bags. My name is Aoife Madden, I'm 29 years of age, and I've got Fowler's Syndrome. I had a great childhood. I grew up really happy and was very lucky and fortunate to have some lovely family holidays. And all that changed so dramatically for me at the age of 16 when I developed shingles um, on my sort of groin area that spread to my bladder and caused Fowler's Syndrome. So I cannot wee at all on my own. I've now got a super pubic catheter which comes out of my sort of midriff. Uh, there's a tube with a little uh, valve at the end and you attach a bag and it just sort of empties periodically throughout the day. I've been in and out of hospital for the last 12-13 years. I've had over 100 general anaesthetics and due to that my veins uh, are collapsing upon use. The pain is so excruciating that you're shaking and crying and it's the worst pain I've ever felt in my life and you don't just get it once off, I get this regularly and it's terrifying when you know it's about to happen because you know the pain that you're about to go through. Pain is physical, right? But I think your mental outlook to that pain can have a big impact on it. So I guess what I mean by that is the pain is still there. I'm not necessarily saying by having a positive outlook the pain will go away, but it maybe minimises it from a seven or an eight to a four or a five on that day. Uh, and that means I still feel the pain. Um, I think I feel pain every day, if I'm being completely honest. As a teenager, it was quite difficult, I think, going out sort of 16, 17, 18, booking your first girls' holiday, um, going out on your first big girls' night out. I think that embarrassment stopped me from talking to a lot of people. And I told my close family, but it often found that they just didn't get it. They didn't understand what it meant or how it affected me. Um, and then, through support groups um, and just talking more openly with friends and family, I've kind of now come to accept it, um, which makes it a lot easier. I feel like the more people you talk to, the less embarrassing you feel it is. At the age of 18, it's all hopefully a long life ahead of me, you know, 60, 70, 80 years, and you think, okay, can, can I do this for 60, 70 years? But I think sort of owning the problem really helped me to feel empowered by what was going on. For me, especially as when I was in my early 20s, having to talk to your ordinarily male manager about having urinary tract infections was very daunting and very embarrassing and also shameful. And luckily, I've had really understanding managers. Holding down a full-time job, it was a really big achievement for me. You know, I've had a full-time job for five years and I'm doing really well in my career. But I remember coming out of university after I'd had the condition for a few years, I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to do it because 
would I have too much sick leave? Would, 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 would the business not really understand? Because how do you explain a condition that even I don't really understand. Nowadays I'm a full-time primary school teacher um, and I run a blog called Bees for Bladder. I also have a podcast called C is for Chronically Fabulous where we interview lots of other people suffering with chronic health conditions. Bladder Health UK have been amazing in providing me with advice and support on when to take my medication and they've also put me or gave me a name of a urologist that I should see and when I saw him it really was the first time I felt hopeful about my prospects. Now I'm managing my overactive bladder better, I've found solutions that work for me and I'm kind of just building that into my life and accepting that this is something I've got to live with. Despite everything, I think mine's been quite a positive experience. Uh, I've got a loving fiance and, and we're very fortunate that we've just had a baby. She's five weeks old, she's beautiful, her name's Lily. And me and my partner Rosina are over the moon to welcome her and she certainly helps on those dark days to bring a bit of light into our lives.